ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತನಮಿ ಪಿಶುಚಿಪೂತ್ರ ಅತ್ರ ಸ್ವರೂಪುರಿ ಮಾಚೂರಿ ಗೋಷ್ಟುವಾತಿ ರಾಧಾಕುಂದ ಗಿರಿವರ ಓ ರಾಧಿಕ ಮಾಸ ಪ್ರಪ್ತೂಯ ಪ್ರತಿತ ಕೃಪೆಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಗೌರವೇ ಗೌರಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಧಿಕಾಯತಾಳೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತ ತದ್ಭಕ್ತ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಆನಂದಲೀಲಮಾಯ ವಿಗ್ರಹಾಯ ಹೇಮ ಬದ್ಯಾವಿ ಸುಂದರಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಮಹಾಪ್ರೇಮರಸಪ್ರದ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಶಾಂ ಸುಂದರ ಶಿಖಂಡ ಶಿಖರ್ ಸ್ಮರಹಾಸು ಮುರಳಿ ಮನೋಹರ ರಾಧಿಕ ರಸಿಕ ಮಮ್ಮ ಕೃಪ ನಿಧೆ ಸ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ಚಾರಣ ಕಿಂ ಕುರಿಂ ಕುರು ತವೈವಸ್ಮಿ ತವೈವಸ್ಮಿ ನಾ ಜೀವಾಮೆ ತ್ವಯಾಭಿನಾ ವಿಖ್ಯಾಯ ದೇವಿ ತಂ ನಮಂ ಚರಣಾಂತಿಕ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಓ ಐ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಸಸ್ತಂಗ್ ದಂಡವತ್ ಪುಷ್ಪಾಂಜಲಿ ಮೈ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ಸ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಹೋಲಿ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಮೈ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ವರ್ಷಿಪಬಲ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಅಸ್ಮ ದೇಹ ಪರ್ಮ ರಾಧತಮ್ ಗುರು ಪಾದ ಪದ್ಮ ನಿತ್ಯ ಲೀಲಾ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತರ ಸತ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪನುಗಾಚಾರಿ ವಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ಲಿ ಐ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೀಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಗುರುಸ್ ಗುರು ಮೈ ಪರಮ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಾಪಾದ್ and all of the great spiritual masters in our unbroken tradition going back thousands of years to sri krishna himself and finally i offer my pranam to all of you my dear brothers and sisters vaishnavas and vaishnavis around the world vanchakalpaturu bascha kripa sindhu bhavacha putitanam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namah So you may remember that last week we were discussing verse 3 of chapter 10 where Sri Krishna explains that a person is free from bewilderment when they know that he is the origin of all existence that he is both born and also unborn and Uh, that he has all transcendental qualities being the supreme personality of godhead and the controller of all living beings and all planes of existence uh, material and spiritual so now sri krishna is continuing to describe his vibhutis that means his specific powers mm. so and they they're coming in a list so we'll read the the verses one by one and then we'll go through each one of these vibhutis of sri krishna and uh try to enter into understanding of their significance in the flow of sri krishna's conversation with arjun so krishna said buddhi gyanam asammoha ಕ್ಷಮಾ ಸತ್ಯಂ ದಮಾ ಕ್ಷಮ ಸುಖಂ ದುಃಖಂ ಬವೋ ಭವೋ ಭಯಂ ಚಾಭಯಂ ಐವ ಅಹಿಂಸ ಸಮತ ತುಷ್ಟಿಸ್ ತಪೋ ಧಾನ ಯಶೋ ಯಶ ಬವಂತಿ ಭಾವಭೂತಾನ ಮತ ಐವ ಪೃಥಗ್ವಿದ 
So these are the qualities Sri Krishna is describing now. Buddhi, intelligence, jnanam, knowledge, asammoha, uh, freedom from confusion, uh, the kshama, tolerance, sama, uh, satyam, sorry, truthfulness, uh, dhamma, the control of the senses, and shama, control of the mind, um, then suk and duk, happiness and distress, bhava and abhava, the birth and death, uh, bhayam and abhayam, fear and fearlessness, ahimsa, non-violence, and samata, equanimity, equilibrium, tushti, satisfaction, tapa, austerity, uh, dhanam, uh, charity, yashaha, fame, and ayasha, infamy. So Sri Krishna is saying all these various states of the living beings arise from me alone. So, many different ideas are being expressed here. First of all, Sri Krishna is speaking about three qualities. They are the buddhi, intelligence, jnana, knowledge, and asamoha, freedom from confusion. And uh, a person would think, well, if you have intelligence and you have knowledge and you're not confused, your mind is not disturbed in any way, then you can know the truth. So, see, Krishna is describing here that no, these qualities are, sat are of sattva gun. And sattva gun is one aspect of maya, the material energy. Therefore, even if a person is, uh, has buddhi, that means here, buddhi means shukshmarta nishchai samartyam. Samartya, the capability, the ability to nishchai, to ascertain the shukshma arta, the very subtle meanings of statements. So, let's say a person is studying the scriptures very carefully, and that person is intelligent, he is very learned, and he is capable of. Um, ascertaining the subtle meaning of statements, poetic implications and so on. But Krishna is saying, no, not enough. By this you will not be able to realize, you will not be able to understand, you will not be able to know me, because I am gunatit, beyond the three gunas. And this quality of buddhi, or the Shukshma Arta Nischai Samartya, the capability to understand the subtle meanings of literature, including the subtle meanings of the scripture. This is a sattvic quality and therefore it gives no access to me at all. So then, see Krishna says Jnanam. What does Jnanam, knowledge, means? Knowledge means the Atma Anatma Vivekaha, the ability to discriminate between what is the self and what is not the self, to know that you are not this body or mind. It is the ability to discriminate between Chit and Achit, the spiritual and the material, the conscious and the inert, the, the sentient and the insentient uh, components of reality. If you can discriminate in this, you can know that you're not the body, but you cannot know the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. So, Gyan is not enough. Asamoha, the absence of confusion, anxiety, or distraction. So, if a person has these qualities, and they're serving Krishna with the Bhakti, then these qualities may play a supporting role uh, in the sense that 
if you if you are uh, because they are sattvic and sattva is like a window uh, a bl- if the if there's a window, you can see outside. But if you're blind, even if there's a window, you cannot see anything. <laughs> so a window doesn't uh, give you the power to see. But if you can see, and also there's a window, then you can see outside. So similarly, if a person uh, is in uh, Satugun, and then they are practicing bhakti uh, in addition to that, then the rays of the spiritual energy coming from the association of pure devotees can shine through that window of their citta, which is sattvic, which is clear, and very easily affect them. Whereas those who are very rajasic and tamasic, they'll also be affected by Vaishnava association, but it will take more time. So, now see Krishna is explaining kshama, tolerance, Sattva, truthfulness, and Dhamma, control of the senses and control of the mind, these qualities all come from Sattva Gun. Uh, so they're also m- uh, of Maya. Then the next quality is Sukh and Dukh, happiness and distress. Happiness is when the mind uh, is uh, f- experiencing Prakash or Ulas, that it is illuminating and it is. Uh, expanding from a contracted state that is called sukha so that is a quality of sattva gun the mode of goodness whereas dukkha is the contraction of the consciousness and uh, that the unease that we feel when our consciousness contracts is called misery and that is a product of tamas the mode of ignorance now Bhava and Abhava refers here to birth and death. And this is a special type of misery, a particular type of misery and fear. And these uh, come from Tamagun. Those who have pure consciousness know that there is, there is no death. I will not die uh, just as I have changed body from being a baby to being a child to being a young adult to being middle-aged to being in old age, as the body is changing during this life, so death is just another change of body. So, uh, the fear of death and the experience, help, help, I'm dying, is comes from the mode of ignorance. Now, fearlessness is mentioned here, uh, Abhai. Fearlessness can come from sattva gun if it arises from knowledge. For example, a person who is in sattva gun and is free from bewilderment, he is not afraid of anything because he knows that the soul is spiritual and cannot be harmed. Uh, but there's another type of fearlessness, uh, such as the fearlessness of a warrior on the battlefield. Um, he is ready to die for whatever his cause is. And... Uh, he, he's identifying with his body out of the mode of passion. Mm? But he's also fearless. So this fearlessness is also fearlessness but coming from Rajagun, the mode of passion. So then, only a person who is fearless because they are free from illusion. Uh, they understand, I am not the doer. Uh, then, that fearlessness is coming from sattva gun. So if a person knows I am not the doer and he performs austerities, then the austerity can be sattvic. If a person thinks I am the doer and performing the same austerities, then that austerity is rajasic. So here, yash and ayash, fame and infamy. So in this case, yash be, it means being well known for one's virtuous qualities. And ayash also means being well known, but for one's irreligious activities. So, in the end, Sri Krishna said that all of these qualities come from my maya. 
And because Shakti Shakti Matayo Abed, there is a Achintya Bed Abed Tattva relationship. That is, there is an inconceivable difference and also non difference between Shakti, the energies of God, and Shakti man, God Himself. Therefore, see Krishna is saying, all of these qualities, they have come from me, they are created by me alone. So these are different aspects of his vibhutis, and uh, Krishna is summarizing them. And in the context of our conversation, uh, the conversation that Krishna is having with Arjuna, Krishna is essentially saying, all of these various qualities do not reveal me. Uh, you cannot know me by these qualities. I am known only by bhakti. So now, in the next verse, that is in verse 6, uh, Sri Krishna, he is saying, Maharshaya Satta Puravei Chattvaro Manavastata Madbhava Manasa Jata Yesham Loka Ima Praja the seven sages and before them the four Kumaras and also the fourteen Manus whose descendants are the human beings of this world they have all arose from my mind so here see Krishna is describing the gradual population of the universe. So when uh, Garbhadaka Shai Vishnu is reclining in the uh, Garbhadaka ocean, from his navel appears the Lord Brahma. And this from Lord Brahma come the uh, four Kumaras the first uh, sages, Sanak Sananda Sanatana and Sanak Kumar. And then come the, uh, the seven great sages and the fourteen Manus. The, there's a Manu, fourteen Manus in one uh, day of Lord Brahma. Beginning with Swayam Bhuva Manu, gradually, gradually, the various Manus come. Now we are living during the reign of Vaivasvata Manu. And from the Manus come the human beings. So, here, see, Krishna is describing how uh, every living being is connected to Him because the universe is populated. We have come from our ancestors and those ancestors have come from their ancestors and so on. It, the human beings all trace their ancestry back to the Manus and the Manus to the Rishis and the Rishis to uh, Lord Brahma and Lord Brahma to Sri Krishna. So whatever you're seeing anywhere in the world, the origin is Sri Krishna himself. Mm. So... Now in the next verse, Sri Krishna is saying, Eitam vibhutim yogam cha, mama yo veti tattotha, so vikalpena yogena yujitena trasangshaya. Krishna is saying, one who knows my vibhutis, my all the various features of my opulence, and my qualities, such as that I am unborn, and the origin of everything, and uh, the controller of all the worlds. And who accepts these to be true in tattva? That person becomes fixed in unflinching bhakti. Mm. Through that knowledge, yujatena trasangsha, of this there is no doubt. So, in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna said, Sangshatma vinashati, if you have any doubt in this knowledge, then your life will be completely ruined. But on the other hand, Sadavan Labate Gyanam, those who have faith in this knowledge of the Gita, they will attain realization, divine realization. So that's what Sri Krishna is saying here that a person. Drida vishvasena yo grinanti 
means a person who accepts this teaching with strong faith. Now, why should one accept this teaching with strong faith? Sarvagena Vasudevain Upadishtadam Idam Tattukam that this tattwa, these principles, have been instructed by Vasudev, the son of Vasudev, that is Krishna himself, who is Sarvagya. God is all-knowing. He knows everything. So if the Supreme Lord explains some tattwa, then we should put, uh, have complete confidence in those uh, instructions. So, if someone puts complete confidence in the instructions of Sri Krishna in this regard, then so vikalpena yogena, he becomes situated in bhakti yoga, devotion, avikalpa, without any um, vikalpa, that means without any imagination, without any oscillation of mind. It is the, um, in the Yoga Sutras, Vikalpa is called imagination or the abstractions of the mind which have no corresponding uh, factual external mind independent reality. And the same uh, Vikalpa in the Srimad Bhagavatam is in the third canto is called Sangshai, doubt. So the oscillation of mind, the Unser the ab ability to try to abstract and understand the world uh, using one's material intelligence and doubt, these are the same thing. Because our own, the ex abstractions that we do to understand the world through our own intelligence come from unsteadiness of mind. They come from Rajagun. They are themselves uh, doubtful. Though we believe them for some time, we'll give up that belief also after some time. But those who are situated in devotional service, when one is engaged in devotional service, the mind becomes steady and realization of Krishna comes and there is the avikalpena yogena, no doubt at all. So, another implication of this verse is without a proper understanding of Sri Krishna's greatness, it's not possible to perform ananya bhakti, pure unalloyed devotional service. Hmm? If one understands that everything has come from Krishna, he is the foundation of everything, everything is his, his opulence, then actually there is no alternative but to serve him. That's the natural conclusion. But if one doesn't clearly understand that there is no existence, including oneself, which is, can be at any moment independent from Krishna, if we don't understand this, then we'll think, well, I can be independent from Krishna. The things of this world can be independent from Krishna. There, there's a possibility of doing other activities other than Ananya Bhakti, one-pointed devotion to Him. So, the essence of these verses is that by knowing Krishna, Krishna's vibhuti's opulences, that nothing is independent from him, one can engage in ananya bhakti. And if we don't grasp this, then we cannot engage in ananya bhakti, unalloyed devotional service. So, now, see Krishna is coming to verse 8. Verse 8. 8, 9, 10, and 11 are known as Chatu Sloki Gita. The essence of the entire Bhagavad Gita in only four verses. So, if you missed uh, the other um, 696 verses of Bhagavad Gita, you're in luck because you'll be able to understand the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita simply by uh, realizing the meaning of these four verses. So Krishna begins by saying, Aham Sarvasa Prabhavo Mataha Sarvam Pravartate Iti Matva Bhajanti Maam Buddha Bhava Samanvitaha So first, Aham Sarvasa Prabhavo means I am the birth of everything. 
Hmm? I am the cause of everything. That means I am the instrumental cause of the existence of everything and I am the ingredient cause. I am the formal cause. Hmm? I am the cause of the teleology, the, the specific potencies uh, present, uh, manifest, or formally or latent in all things. So, Ahamsar Rasha Prabhavo, Mataksar Vam Pravartate, and from me the functions of all things are initiated. That means in the form of Paramatma. That is my expansion as Paramatma. I engage everyone in their vrittis, in their functions. So, pravartate means everyone is pravrit. Everyone is inspired uh, by me in the form of Paramatma. So, what does that mean? It can mean that... It is my power of Paramatma that gives everyone the ability to act. Mm? It is Paramatma who is making the connection between the soul and the physical body, the senses and the mind, all the instruments which make action possible. It also means that Krishna is saying, I have many avatars, I have many incarnations and I come into this world and through m my incarnations, I uh, impel everyone to act according to their qualifications. For example, uh, see Krishna's uh, incarnation of his, that is his uh, Bhakti avatar, that is Narad Muni. Narad Muni comes to this world and inspires everyone to do Bhakti. Mm. Then the four Kumaras, they are considered to be the Gyan avatars of the Lord. They come into this world and they inspire people to follow the path of Gyan, the path of uh, knowledge. The Naranarayan Rishi come to this world and show the path of Tapa, austerities, and so on. So, uh, in this way, various incarnations, various sages establish the different paths, karma, jnana, yoga, tapasya, and bhakti. And thus, everyone is pravrit by Krishna, mataksarvam pravartate, everything is going on, on all levels, uh, uh, because of me, or me in the form of my various incarnations and empowered living beings, avesh avatars. Mm. So then Krishna is saying, Iti Matva, when you know this, Iti Matva, having understood this, Bhajanti Mam, then one will engage in my devotional service. Buddha, who? That person is Buddha, that means intelligent. That person is really Buddha. That person is really a pandit. He's really learned, who understands this truth about Sri Krishna, that Sri Krishna is. Uh, through his energies, which are non-different from him, the ingredient cause of the world. He is the instrumental cause of the world in the form of the glance of Vishnu. He is the um, cause of the form of the world. He is the cause of the teleology of the world. And he, either directly or through his various Avesh avatars, uh, his empowered incarnations, engages everyone in different types of work according to their uh, eligibility. When a person knows this, then that person is intelligent and they engage in Krishna's service. And now here comes the very important essence of Bhagavad Gita. Buddha Bhava Samanvita And they serve me Bhava Samanvit. That means being absorbed in a particular mood. This is very important. Bhava Samanvit. In a particular bhav, that means their, their bhajan to me, their service to me is Bhava Samanvit. It is in one of the five primary relationships that a living being can have with God. So we'll elaborate a little bit more upon that as we 
um, discuss the next verses. Now, itim matwa means after a person has understood this, he serves me, itim matwa. But the implication is after a person who has received these instructions of Bhagavad Gita from a tattva vit Vaishnava, because only the devotees know this truth. So if anyone else knows them, then they only know them because they heard them from my uh, devotee. In other words, a person cannot know this by his own endeavor. He cannot know this by listening to uh, a very learned scholar. He cannot know this by listening to anyone explain Bhagavad Gita if that person who is explaining himself is not a realized devotee. And he, even if the person explaining Bhagavad Gita is a devotee, but that devotee doesn't have realization, he is not devoted to Krishna, he has not realized the form and the name and the qualities of Sri Krishna. If that devotee himself is not situated in his own eternal loving relationship with Krishna, also listening from that person you will not know this truth and you will not engage in bhajan. Hmm. So, now see Krishna is explaining what it means, what is the, uh, what it means to be bhajan imam, to engage, be engaged in bhajan to me. What is the life of that Buddha Bhava Samanvita, that intelligent person, that Pandit, hmm, who is Bhava Samanvita, absorbed in serving me with a particular relationship? How do they live? Now Krishna is describing that in the next verse. He is saying, Mats Chitta, Madgata Prana, Bodhayanta Parasparam, Katiyanchas Chamam Nityam, Susyanticha Ramanticha. Krishna describes Machita, their chitta, their innermost consciousness hmm, is completely absorbed in me. Madgata Prana, their lives are dedicated to me. So, Pran is that by which all movement takes place. So, first Krishna speaks about the movements of their mind, Matchita. And now, Madgata Prana, the movements of their senses, in other words, all of their activities in the world. So, they're fully uh, dedicated to me. Wholeheartedly engaged in my devotional service, inwardly and outwardly in a particular bhav. So what is this? Srila Vishnu Thakur in his commentary said these verses of Krishna are only describing Raga Nuga Bhakti spontaneous love for Sri Krishna because how is uh, Raga Nuga Bhakti performed? Seva Sadaka Rupena Siddha Rupena Chatrahi Tad bhava lipsuna karya braja lok anusarata. Hmm. Following the bhavs, the moods of the residents of Vrindavan who have particular relationships with Sri Krishna, one renders service outwardly in the sadhak form, that means in your external body one engages in hearing, chanting, remembering, that is madgata prana, and inwardly, siddha rupaena chatri, one serves with the antas chinti, the bista tat seva upayogi dehena, that one serves with the siddha rup. So the siddha rup is a form uh, which the chitta has assumed under the influence of the bhakti shakti, and that form is exactly, uh, precisely suitable for serving Krishna, for rendering one's uh, most cherished loving services following in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan. So that is the meaning of Matschitta. So Matschitta Madgata Prana means Seva Sadaka Rupena Siddha Rupena Chatrahi. Following the path of Raganuga Bhakti, being absorbed in the mood of 
f of a particular resident of Vrindavan and serving outwardly by hearing, chanting and remembering Madgata Prana and serving inwardly by one Siddha Deya, one spiritual form. So, mm, here Madgata Prana also means that Krishna is saying, my devotees cannot live without me. Mm. So just as a person cannot live without their pran, they will die at once. Just as a fish taken out of water experiences extreme anxiety and quickly expires. So similarly, the devotees, Krishna is saying, my devotees are so attached to me that without me they are like a fish out of water and they cannot live for a moment. Mm. So, this is really Raganuga Bhakti. Because in Vaidhi Bhakti, then th though the devotee is engaged in hearing, chanting and remembering outwardly, but he is not uh, uh, fixed in a particular mood of a, a, an associate in, of Vrindavan, whether that's friendship or parental love or romantic love. And his inspiration to serve Krishna is yattaraganovaptatvat. He does not have a taste in the moods of those residents of Vrindavan. Uh, and so we cannot say that without Krishna he will be like a fish out of water. Mm. So these verses exclusively describe Raganuga Bhakti. Now, our Param Gurudev Sila Bhakti Pragyan Keshu Goswami Maharaj has commented that there is some secret uh, in Bhagavad Gita and especially in these particular verses. So, we should know that great sages have glorified the Bhagavad Gita and in the uh, Gita Mahatmya, the glories of Bhagavad Gita, there it is said, Sarvu Panishado Ghavo Dogda Gopala Nandana Parto Vatsa Sudir Bhokta Dugdam Gita Mritam Mahat. The meaning is that all of the mm, Upanishads, which are the crest jewels of the Vedas, uh, they are considered to be like a cow. So just as a, a, a farmer can milk a cow and the essence of that cow is the, is the milk. So similarly, someone has milked the, the, the cow of the Upanishads to take the essence of all the Upanishads. So who, if someone will milk a cow, the person who is most expert in that is a cowherd boy. So in regard to the Bhagavad Gita, Dogda Gopal Nandana, Gopal Nandan, the son of a cowherd man, that is Krishna, he is uh, the person who is milking all the Upanishads. Now, if you want to milk the cow, it w it's sometimes difficult to get the milk to flow. So the cowherd boy brings a calf, and when the cow sees the calf, then uh, with a heart melting with parental affection, then naturally the milk begins to flow. It's very easy to milk the cow. So, uh, in this situation, the, the milk of the essence of all the Upanishads is Bhagavad Gita. And what is causing the Bhagavad Gita to flow? That is the presence of the calf, that is mm, Arjun. And who is the beneficiary of this milk? Mm? The calf is there, but the calf is uh, there to cause the milk to flow, that is, inspire Krishna to extract the essence of the Upanishads. So, uh, the, the beneficiary uh, of this milk, that is Mahat, the great devotees. Hmm? So, the great devotees, they drink the Amrita, Gita Amrita Mahat, they drink the nectar of the, the Bhagavad Gita. Uh. So, 
There's a hint in this verse. We know that Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Devaki Nandan, Yasho, the uh, Vasudev Krishna, Vasudev Nandan, the son of Vasudev and Devaki of Mathura or of Dwarka. That very Krishna is speaking this Bhagavad Gita. And this is true for the devotees of Vasudev Krishna. But we are the devotees of Krishna of Vrindavan, not Krishna's expansion, Vasudev Krishna. Vasudev Krishna is the uh, Vaibhava Pakash, an opulent manifestation of Krishna of Vrindavan. So Chaitanya Mahapu said to Rupa Goswami, Krishna nyo yadu sambhutau na puna sostata pura Vrindavanam parichadya padamekam nagachati. That hmm, that Krishna, who is famous in Mathura and Dwarka as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, is different from that Krishna of Vrindavan. Why? Because Krishna of Vrindavan, he never takes Sakvachinnai Vagachati. He never goes even one step outside of Vrindavan. So Krishna of Vrindavan, is, that is the original form of Krishna, who is the Purnatamam. Krishna in Dwarka is pur, Purna complete, in Mathura is Purnatama, pur, Purnatara, more complete, and in Vrindavan is Purnatama, most complete, and most sweet. So that Krishna is the Swayam Bhagavan, original Krishna, and the Krishna who goes to Mathura and to Dwarka and who speaks this Bhagavad Gita, uh, this is the Vasudev Nandan, Devaki Nandan Krishna, the Vaibhav Pakash, opulent manifestation of Krishna of Vrindavan uh, because Krishna never leaves Vrindavan he never puts a foot outside of Vrindavan so that uh, Siddhanta is well known and the statements are there to support that in in uh, scripture however we see here in the Gita Mahatmya verse 6 it is said Dogda Gopala Nandana that the person who is milking all the Upanishads to produce this Amrita, this nectar of the Vedas, is Gopal Nandan. He is not a Katriya Nandan. He is not the son of Vasudev. He is the son of Nanda Maharaj. So this is astonishing. And see, Rupa Goswami in Lagu Bhagatamrita has said that Krishna e exists eternally in Vrindavan. And in his expansion, he's eternally in Dwarka and eternally in Mathura. So three forms of Krishna eternally exist in three abodes in the spiritual world. However, when Krishna comes to this world, then there is the uh, Gaman Agaman. Gaman Agama means coming and going. Krishna comes and goes. So how can we uh, reconcile these two ideas that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan, but at the same time, in this world there's Gaman Agaman. So the meaning is this, that when Krishna leaves Vrindavan and goes to Mathura and Dwarka, he never leaves Vrindavan because he's still present in Vrindavan in his aprakat, unmanifest form. And those who have Prem, at the time of Krishna's Leela, they can experience His presence there through the feelings of separation. Hmm? And those who have Prem today, when they go to Vrindavan, they can experience Krishna's uh, aprakat, unmanifest Leela, still going on today in Vrindavan. Yahi, hmm? yahi, nischaya kahi. Uh, the bridge basis say, uh, we, we have no need to go to Goloka Vrindavan, the spiritual world. This is the spiritual world. This Vrindavan is the spiritual world. So those who have Prem, they can realize it. Mm. So, uh, now, the form of Krishna that leaves is, on the one hand, Krishna's expansion. But that expansion, Vasudev Krishna, is an expansion of Krishna for those who are Mathura Basis and Dwarka Basis for those who are the eternal residents of Mathura or Dwarka and in the mood of Aishwarya they are seeing Dwarka Dish Krishna, Maturesh Krishna the expansion of Krishna of Vrindavan but for those who are in the mood of Braja then that is Krishna himself is going there 
and that Krishna himself of Braja has gone to Mathura but he's only showing the Vasudev feature to the residents of Mathura and Dwarka but not to those who are in the mood of Vrindavan and that is why Radhika when she met with Krishna at Kurukshetra she did not say oh you are not my Krishna of Vrindavan you are his expansion but rather she said Priyaso yam krishna satri krut chetra militas tataham sarada tamidam ubayo sangama sukam. I am the same Radharani and you are the same Krishna who met many years ago in Vrindavan. Hmm? So it depends on the mood of the devotee. And so this has been hinted at in the Gita Mahatma that Sarvo Panishadu Gavo Dogda Gopala Nandana, the son of Nanda Maharaj of Vrindavan, is bringing us this milk of Gita. Mm? But he's hiding himself from those who are in the mood of Mathura and Dwarka. Only those who are in the mood, mood of Braja can realize this fact. So, mm? Now, Krishna, in Bhagavad Gita, he speaks about surrender. Sarva dharmam parichaja mame kam shanam parja aham tam sarva papebhu machai sam yamasu chaha Abandon all dharmas related to the physical body and mind and surrender to me. I will protect you from all sinful reactions, don't fear. Now, our Srila Jiva Goswami in Bhakti Sandarbha said, this surrender or Atmani Vedan, offering oneself to Krishna, is of two types. It can be Bhava Bina without a specific mood. That is a general Atmani Vedan. Or it can be a special Atmani Vedan that is called Bhava Vaishistha. Bhava Vaishisht, surrendering to Krishna in a particular mood. So, Srila Jiva Goswami gives two examples. In the 11th canto, chapter 29, verse 34, see Krishna says, Ma tyo yada chakta somasta karma, nivedidat ma vichitishato me, tadam ritatvam pratipadya mano, mamatma buyaya chakalpa tevai. If a person in this world is a mortal being in the cycle of birth and death, but they give up all karma, reward-seeking activities, fruitive activities related to the body and mind, person gives that up, nivedi-tatma, and offers himself to me, vichakish to me, and desiring some special mercy, then, uh, then I make that person immortal and I bestow upon him opulences like my own. That means he gets liberation to Vaikuntha. This is the example of surrendering to Krishna without any particular mood. So the example in, in, in scripture is Bali Maharaj. When Lord Vamandev asked for three paces of, of land, then he took the entire universe with two paces. And then he said, oh, where can I place my third step? Then Bali Maharaj said, you can place your third step upon my head. And so he's the example of Atmani Vedan. He fully surrendered himself to Krishna. But this is not the example of Buddha Bhava Samanvita, surrendering with a specific mood. This is only uh, the Bhava, uh, Bhava Bina Atmani Vedan, surrendering without a particular mood. So Srila Jiva Goswami gives the example of Bhava Vishishta, uh, surrendering with a specific mood. In the, 11, in the 10th canto, chapter 52, verse 39, there Rukmini Devi, she says, <clears throat> Ten me bhavan kalu Vrita pati ang jayam at marpitas chabavato travibo videhi. Mavirya bhagamavit 
Masha tu chai ja arad, go ma yuvan rigapate bale mambu jaksha. Oh my dear Lord Krishna, I have chosen you as my husband. And I surrender myself to you. So there, surrender, but with a particular relationship. I have chosen you as my husband. Hmm? Please come swiftly, O Almighty One, and make me your wife. Hmm? O lotus-eyed Krishna. Hmm? Shishupal is like a jackal, and you are like a lion. So the jackal should not take that which belongs to the lion. Hmm? That means you are a hero, and he is a villain. So the hero should come and take the heroine and not leave her at, uh, to the, at the mercy of the villain. Hmm? So, this is the Bhava Vaishishta. Uh, surrender in a particular mood. Hmm. So, when Krishna said, Sarva Dhamma surrender to me, giving up all dharmas, Aham Tam Sarva Papejo Mokshashami, I'll deliver you from all sins. This is a parallel verse uh, to the verse of the 11th canto, Mato Yada Chakta Samasta Karma Nivedi Tatma Vichikisa Tome. He's surrendering and he wants some specific. Um, Benefit some mercy from the Lord. That is, oh, save me from the this worldly existence and all sinful reactions. So th these are two verses are uh, parallel. But in these verses of the Chatusloki Gita, see Krishna is speaking about the Buddha Bhava Samanvita, the surrender in a particular mood. But not only is Krishna suggesting surrender. In with above, see Krishna is also hinting, I want you to surrender to me in a particular above, in one specific mood. And what is that mood? Krishna is hinting here. So, in the uh, commentary, on Hemadri's Muktafal, there Bopadev has uh, written a verse. He said, Veda Puranam Kabyam Cha Prabhu Mitram Priyeva Cha Bodhayanti Iti Prahus Trivid Bhagavatam Puna Because we're discussing this verse. Machita madgata prana now bodayantaha parasparam. The devotees, their hearts are dedicated to me. They're serving me internally. Madgata prana, their bodies are mm, serving me outwardly. Bodayantaha parasparam, and they enlighten each other. Bodayantaha. So here the word body entity is used. It is say, here. It is stated that the Vedas, the Puranas. And kavya and poetry, they bodhantaha. That means they enlighten. They speak their message and enlighten their readers or their hearers in three ways. Like mm, a king, like a friend, and like a beloved. So, here, the Vedas give orders. Satyam bada, tell the truth. Dharamat charo. Follow your duties. Mm -hmm. So just as a king gives orders, so the Vedas give orders. Imperatives, what you must do. Whereas Purana, the Purana, they tell stories. So, and that is giving an instruction like a Mitra, a friend. So a friend, he doesn't think, I'm in such a position, I can order you what to do. But a friend may say, well, you know, once... I was in a situation just like you, and they tell a story from their own life or from a life of someone that they know, uh, which has a good ending or a bad ending, and in this way they give a caution or a suggestion through a story. Uh, so the Puranas are like that. And then thirdly, Kavya. Kavya means poetry. And a Kavya gives an instruction like a lover. When a lover gives instruction, then the uh, lover 
just does not say directly, but speaks indirectly by Vyanjan Briti, by giving hints, by suggestion, uh, by some smiles and movements of the eyes. And one can learn from a lover such things w in such a way that you feel such joy that you don't even realize that you're learning. Hmm? So, just as the person who has love can give instructions to his beloved just by suggestion or by indirect explanation, so Krishna is giving by hints and by indirect words, by implications, he's giving a hint to those on the path of Raganuga Bhakti and telling them, serve me inwardly and outwardly and be Buddha Bhava Samanvita absorbed in Madhuras, a romantic relationship with me. How is that so? So, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaraj gave an example that there was a very intelligent speaker and he was very popular and many persons were serving him. And with great love, he was giving them some instructions how to serve. But the instructions how to serve were just general instructions for everyone. But one day, in the audience, the, that person's lover was present. And that person was so intelligent that though he was speaking in a general way instructions for everyone, he managed to speak in such a way that there were some hints that only his lover could understand that there were some special instructions for her. So, in the same way, just as the common people, the general, his general servants, could only understand the general meaning of his words, but his lover could understand the specific meaning, in the same way, the common people can only understand the general meaning of Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dhamam Prachadya, but they cannot understand the special meaning of Bhagavad Gita. Only those who are in the path of Raganuga Bhakti realize Tusyanticara, Manticha, hmm, that Krishna is describing. My devotees, they take pleasure in interacting with me. Ramanticha means the pleasure that I am their Raman, I am their beloved. Ramanticha. Radha Raman ki jai! So, here we see that commentators like the great commentator Sridhar Swami, he explains to Shanticha, Ramanticha, that the devotees, they feel ananda, they feel joy, they feel anumod. They, because when they kateyantas chaman nityam, bodhyantara parasparam, when the devotees are enlightening each other, bodhyantara parasparam means one is speaking, others are listening. And then the others who are listening are now speaking and the one who is speaking is listening. So the devotees come together and they mutually enlighten each other by discussion of my um, sweet qualities, my uh, beauty of my form and my pastimes and my associates. So Kateyantascha, Krishna is describing. The most advanced devotees, what do they do? They speak Harikata to each other. This is the best, this process, this is the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? And by this, to Syanticha Ramanticha, they feel satisfaction. That means Anumodan. Because Krishna is pleased by their discussion, the devotees become satisfied. Ramanticha. And they take joy in this. Ananda. So, Sri Swami has explained it in this way. However, our commentators like uh, Baladev Vidyabhushan. He has said that Ramanticha m m comes from the word Ram and Ram means Krida, to play. So Ramanticha doesn't mean 
that the devotees just listen to the kata and then they enjoy listening to the kata. But it means because matchitta, they are serving me internally in their siddha rup. When they listen to the kata, then being absorbed in their eternal spiritual form, they play with me in my divine pastimes. So tusyanti cha, ramanti cha, doesn't mean they experience satisfaction and bliss. Oh, this harikata is so nice. This is external consideration. The actual consideration is that the devotees, when they hear harikata, then they become absorbed in their spiritual forms, especially in a particular relation, like gopis of Vrindavan, like Rupa Manjari, like Arati Manjari. And to Syantija, they feel satisfied. How? When Radha and Krishna meet and they see the meeting of Radha and Krishna, oh, now they feel satisfied. Huh? Oh, when Radha and Krishna's beautiful pastimes have the, taken place and they become tired, then mm, those maidservants, they enter into the kunj and they fan them, bring them cooling water, feed them a uh, very fragrant and delicious betel pan, decorate them with flowers. In this way, Ramanticha, Ram means Krida. They serve them in the pastimes. Mm? This is the meaning of this verse. So, Srila Baladevi Dibushan explains Ramanticha means they take pleasure just as uh, uh, Yuva and Yuvati, as a young girl and a young boy, take pleasure in the Kantabhav, the mood of uh, being lover and beloved, and they take pleasure how? Oh. If someone has a beloved and that beloved smiles, they feel happiness seeing the beloved smile. If the beloved glances at them, then they take pleasure in that. So because the devotees hearing Harikata see Radha and Krishna and in their spiritual form serve them and because they see Radha Krishna smiling, because they see how Radha Krishna glance towards each other, because Radha and Krishna glance towards them in their spiritual forms, Ramanticha. There. This is the uh, uh, meaning here. So, Arjun himself, he, when he heard these instructions of Krishna in the 10th chapter, then in the 11th chapter, he reveals how he's understood these essential instructions on Raganuga Bhakti. In chapter 11, verse 44, there Arjun says, hmm, Tasmat pranamya pranidaya kayam prasade tam aham isha idjam Piteva putrasya sakeva sakyu priya priya yahasi deva shodham. O Krishna, I prostrate myself, I bow down at your lotus feet. O adorable Supreme Lord, I beg you to be merciful to me. Just as a father forgives his son, or just as a friend tolerates his friend, or priya priya yahasi deva shodham, or just as a lover excuses his beloved, so you should kindly forgive whatever offenses I have made to you. So here, Arjun himself is directly making reference to surrender to Krishna. But in the mood of a servant, in the mood of a friend, in the mood of a parent, or in the mood of a beloved. Uh -huh. So, in the next verse, uh, which we'll discuss next week, Krishna says, Dadami buddhi yogam tam. I give the buddhi, the intelligence, by which devotees are serving me in this way, by which they come to me. So, that buddhi means the abhiman, the spiritual abhiman. For example, hmm? if a person is a conditioned soul, then they have dehatma buddhi. That is, they have the buddhi that I am my body. Mm -hmm. 
or I am my mind. Hmm? But if someone has Gyan, then uh, they, they have the uh, Atma Buddhi. They know, I am the soul. But here, see Krishna is saying, Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam. If someone is continually serving me uh, in a particular mood, then I myself nourish that mood in such a way that they will enter into my eternal Leela. Mm -hmm. So, this, uh, this Buddhi is the Abhiman. As Srila Raghunath Das Goswami has said in uh, Sri Manashiksha, Madisha na tatwe braja vipina chandram bajabane sarim tam na tatwe tadatu la sakitwe tu la litam vishakan shikshali vitarana gurtwe priyasaro grindro tat prakshala litarati datwe smaramana. Oh, my dear mind, always remember that Giriraj Govardhan and Radha Kund are those divine personalities who give Lalita Rati Dattva Ismarmana. They give Rati. They give love. They give Bhav. Eh? But Rati is in a particular relationship. And here Lalita Rati, Lalita can mean charming, mm, playful. Here Lalita Rati means the love which is the... Mm, which enables one to relish and experience the Leela, Krida, playful pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So, and oh my dear mind, always remember who is Krishna. Madisha na tatwe, braja vipina chandram braja bane. There is a moon who illuminates the forest of Vrindavan. Now the moon is known to be the origin of all flavor of all rasa. So in other words, Krishna is a moon who is full of rasa, who illuminates the forest of Vrindavan. And who is he? Is he my friend? Is he my master? Is he my beloved? Here Raghunath Tassa Swami say, Madisha Natatwe, Krishna is the beloved of my Isha, my Radharani. Mm? In other words, one should adopt the Abhiman, the, 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 the identity of being Radhika's maidservant. Buddha Bhava Samanvita, serving Krishna in one particular mood. So, this is very important. One should, uh, a devotee who wants to serve Krishna in Vrindavan cannot think, my name is uh, Bhakta X and I am from whatever America or Russia or Italy or Spain. And back to X from Spain is serving Krishna, who is the Supreme Lord residing in the topmost realm of the spiritual world. This type of Sambandha, this type of Abhiman, is this is a general surrender, general type of surrender. And by this one cannot attain uh, Sri Krishna's service. One is missing the point of Bhagavad Gita. Buddha Bhava Samanvita, serve me in one particular mood and Krishna is recommending to Syanticha, Ramanticha, the mood of Madhurasa, hmm? in the romantic mood. So, but there are many gopis in the romantic mood uh, towards Sri Krishna. But among them, Srila Raghunath Daskaswami is saying, my relation with Krishna is not direct. I may, my mind always remember that I am the maidservant of Radharani and Krishna is her beloved. Madishana tatwe brajavipina chandram bajamane ishwarim tam na tatwe tadatula sakitwe tulalitam. Always remember that Radharani is my uh, mistress. She is my all in all. She is my swamini. And Lalita is her best friend. And Vishaka is my shiksha guru teaching me so many beautiful arts, uh, how to uh, sing and uh, various other services in the service of Radha and Krishna. Mm. So, this is Tusyanticha Ramanticha. Mm. 
One day, one maidservant of Radharani, she was wandering in the forest, thinking, where? Where is Krishna? Where did he go? We have to spy on him to make sure that he's not a meeting with Chandravali or any other group leader, Yutasri in Baraja. So that maidservant was going through the forest and saw that Sri Krishna had come to a very beautiful kunj. And that was the kunj where later that evening he had sent a message that he will meet with Radharani there. But Krishna during the daytime had already come there and he was decorating that place and making it very, very beautiful. Hmm? And then when Sri Krishna, he was leaving that place, he was just coming out from the kunj and going back to meet with his friends. Then as he was leaving, he looked down and he saw his own footprints on the ground. So then Krishna thought, Oh, if the gopis, Radharani or her sakis, they come here, they arrive first, they'll see that I was already here and that it, I was the one who has done the decorations here. I don't want them to know. Hmm? Because this is the nature of pure love. If you have pure love, then you just want to please the other person. Whether they know that you have done that pleasing service or not is not important. Mm? So even the indirect service, the more distant service or the anonymous service is uh, uh, one of the natural features of pure love. Mm? So Krishna, out of intense love for Radharani and out of humility and out of just wanting to serve her, do something to please her, but not even receive the reward of her recognition for doing that service. So then Sri Krishna, he took off his pitamba, his yellow cloth, and as he was walking, he turned around, and as he was leaving the kunj, he was wiping away his own footprints, so that no one would ever know that he was the one who had rendered that service for Radharani. How beautiful! Hmm? So when that maidservant saw the intensity of Krishna's, when she was in a state of thinking, oh, is Krishna going to meet with someone else? But what did she discover? No, she discovered, hmm? you know, it's easy to show love in front of someone's face, but to show that love, even when that person is not around, eh, then that love is true and deep and real. So when that maidservant witnessed Krishna wiping away his foot, footprints, then she began to cry. Mm? And she felt what? Tushyanti cha! She felt profound satisfaction. Oh, yes. Madishana tatwe prajavitpina chandram bhajamane. Krishna is the beloved. Krishna is the beloved of my Swamini Radhika. This is Sambandha. This is relationship. Mm? To do bhajan related with Krishna in a particular relationship. If you have a relationship with one person, then that relationship, it implies relationship with all things connected to that person. Mm. So, for example, mm, a person can go on Parikrama to Braj and they go to Nandagaon. But what is this Nandagaon? What is this village? Someone may say in a very dispassionate and removed sense, oh, this is the village where Krishna lives. Hmm? But someone who is Buddha Bhava Samanvita, then they will feel, ha, ah, this is my secret sasral. Secret sasral. Hmm? They have possession for that place, Nandaga. Sasral means the mother in law's house. Hmm? Now, the um, Raghunath Das Goswami, Rupa Goswami, all those who are in the mood of Radhika's maidservants, uh, they, are, they are married to gopis who live in Yavat, which is the village of Radharani's mother-in-law. So Yavat, that is the um, Jatila Haveli, the house of Jatila, 
is this Asral or the mother-in-law's house and Yavat is this Asral, the mother-in-law's village for Radhika and her maidservants. That's true. But they don't feel like really they have uh, that relationship. In their heart and in her heart, Radhika feels really my real mother-in-law uh, is Yashoda. But it's secret. No one should know because this is a parakya relationship. So those who are the uh, maidservants of Radhika, they also have that feeling towards. Yashoda is my secret uh, sas. She is my secret mother-in-law. Nandagaon is my secret mother-in-law's home. And Balaram is my secret brother-in-law. And so the relationship with Balaram, the relationship with Krishna, the relationship with Nanda Maharaj, the, um, the heroine has to be very, very respectful to the friends of her hero. So Subal, Sridam, Dam, Vasudam, Stoka, Krishna, Labanga, Kokil, Vasant, Bringa, all the Sakas of Sri Krishna. What relationship do I have? So much honor, so much respect for them. So, oh, what is this Kaliarad? Kaliarad. It's the place where Krishna danced on the head of Kaliya. Kaliarad is the place where Radhika and Braj Gopis, though they are in childhood, suddenly the symptoms of their adolescence, in other words, the romantic love towards Krishna, was manifest very powerfully. In childhood, the gopis' love for Krishna is samanya prem, general prem. But as they begin to mature and realize, oh, I am a young girl and he is a young boy and he is very attractive and I want to serve him uh, as his beloved. When this feeling comes uh, towards the end of uh, the uh, Pauganda Lila, just before the Kishore Lila, then oh, the very intense Vishesh Sambandha is manifest in their hearts. And so this Kaliarad is not prominently the place where Krishna danced on the head of Kaliya. It's the place where there was an in intense explosion of love, that the, the romantic relationship with Krishna uh, was dramatically increased. And the mood of an uh, adolescent heroine manifest. And that love was so intense that Krishna began to dance in ecstasy and just incidentally, he was wrapped up with Kali at that time and he burst out and began to dance in ecstasy, feeling the uh, romantic love of Brajagopis for the first time. Hmm? So, uh, what is this place, Bhangsi Bhat? This Bhangsi Bhat, oh, it's the first time when Krishna played his flute and all met with Sri Krishna for Rasalila. Hmm? It was the, in that place where... Uh, in that Rasamandal, where Sri Krishna abandoned everyone and went alone only with my Swamini. So, in this way, uh, when there is a relationship with Krishna, a particular relation with Krishna, then there's a particular relationship with Radhika, with the Sakas, with her friends, with the, the, with the Sakas, with the cowherd boys, with Nanda Maharaj, with Yashoda, uh, and with all the various places of, of Braja, uh, so that is called the Buddha Bhava Samanvita. Those are the intelligent persons who, first, knowing my opulences, that nothing is independent to me, and that the only meaning of existence is to surrender to me. They surrender to me in one pointed devotion, in a particular mood, and Krishna is speaking in a general way to everyone, and at the same time, he's winking to his devotees of Braja. And Tushyanticha, Ramanticha, you should be in the mood of my Kanta, my uh, beloveds. So, in this way, Dogda Gopal Anandana, the person who is giving the nectar of Bhagavad Gita, is really our Gopal Anandan, Nanda Nandan Yashoda Nandan Krishna of Vrindavan. Bali Brindavan Bihari Lala ki jai, Varasanya Wali ki jai, Jai Jai Sri Radhe Shyam, Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bhav.